hello friends and family. This is Sandra with Mud Hut Homestead. I am in my front garden where I have planted three apple trees. They've been here about nine years and I had ordered the low maintenance disease resistance and that includes blight, rust, uh, and a couple other things. It does not include resistance to black rot. Now it has been very wet this year, like unusually wet. And I am going to have to cut down a tree today. It is too far gone. It has black rot in the trunk. Um, but before I show you that, I'm going to show you what black rot looks like in the early stages. Here's one spot. It starts out like a yellow-orange, and it'll have purple or brown spots in the middle. This one has a little bit. Uh, over here on this tree, this one is covered with, fr it's called frog eye spots. That's one of the earliest stages of black rot. Some of the later stages include, you can see it here, this one has a dark brown spot on the bottom. I'll show you another one that's in the advanced stages, if I can find it here. Here it is. That apple right there has a pretty extensive black rot on that fruit. That one does too. And you can actually see a small fruit up there. It has become mummified. Basically, it stops growing. This one here too. Um, it has become mummified. This one as well. Right here. Uh, here's another one. A very good. Uh, example of black rot. This apple right here. There are some uh, organic measures that can be done. I typically spray with hydrogen, the hydrogen peroxide. peroxide that you buy in the store is actually a 3% hydrogen peroxide to water mix, a 3 to 97% mix. There are commercial grade hydrogen peroxide herbicides that can be used. It has a approximately 30% consistency of hydrogen peroxide to a 70% water. Those are typically sold commercially to landscapers, but I'm just going to use what I can buy in my local store. Um, I estimate that it's probably going to take five to six large bottles of the hydrogen peroxide. I have four trees to spray here. Apples are susceptible to the black rot, but it can also spread to um, stone fruits. Now over here in my garden, this is the south side of my home, I have a peach tree, and that is a Reliance peach. It is supposed to be a dwarf that is not, or a semi-dwarf that's not a semi-dwarf. It was only supposed to be about 12 feet high. It's now a probably close to 20 feet. My apple trees, I am finding about three to four fruits every morning that are on the ground. I've already picked up a few. There's one. There's another one. Uh, there are a few more over there. So what I typically do to ensure that I get some of the fruit, I pick these apples before they are ripe. Yeah, the flavor is not as good as it should be, but at least I get some of the fruit and the squirrels don't get all of it. Something I should have mentioned, I have three different varieties here, and I did purchase these from Stark Nurseries. This one over here is Grand Gala. I don't really particularly like this tree. It's never performed well. I didn't like the fruit that was on it. This fruit is supposed to be ripe in August. Well, it has no fruit on it. It dropped what was there, uh, but this is the tree with black rot that I'm going to be cutting out. But just to recap, this one is a Grand Gala. This one here is an Enterprise, and uh, this one is delicious. It tastes like a Macintosh. It has a really crisp, juicy flavor. If I could have three of these, I would, but I need them for the cross-pollination to have the other ones. Uh, but this is the best of the three. It has the, the best taste. This one over here is a tree called Gold Rush. It it has a nice fruit, it's just not as flavorful as the Enterprise fruit. So, 
That said, let's go over here and take a look at the tree that I have to take out. This one is called Grand Gala. Now, in all fairness, I have to put a disclaimer in here. Part of the reason that this tree has failed, um, n not only has it been excessively wet this season here in Ohio, uh, which is a contributing factor, but when I put this tree in, I had redone the downspouting. The downspouting goes down to here, and it goes into a PVC pipe that comes to light right here at the edge of the bed. There is a slight ledge. Please pardon all the weeds in there. I am working on that problem. But the PVC pipe comes to light in here, and there's a slight ledge to this bed. So once the water comes out of that downspout, it pretty much settles in this area. So once this ground is wet, it stays wet. So I think the combination, the fact that I haven't sprayed in about three years, uh, the excessive wetness of this season, and the fact that black rot's pretty common here in our area has led to the demise of this tree. Uh, I should have frankly taken this tree out last year. I wasn't paying as close of attention as I should have been, and it has just gone rampant this season. You can see it here. I hope my camera is getting a good shot of here. Once this is in the trunk like this, there is no rescuing this tree. Uh, it is, I have a little bit here. This tree has to be removed. Um, it seems drastic, but it has to be done. Black rot is a bacteria. It spreads by spores which means that any bees or birds or any other critters like squirrels that climb through these branches can carry those spores over to my other trees. Now my neighbor, she has a little crab apple out front. We've checked that. It also has the frog eye spot, which is the earliest stages of black rot. The next comes the, the black rot fruit, and then you'll start seeing also some spots throughout your tree once it gets to the trunk, it's too late. She's in the very early stages. It's in her leaves, so we're going to spray her tree as well. Uh, the garden that you saw me clear is back there. But straight down my property line, there's an apple tree that the property owner doesn't really maintain. It's a, a wild apple tree, as far as I can tell, and it grows over my fence. It is not sprayed ever. I'm going to see if I can put that on a spray regiment with her approval. Of the three to lose of my apple trees, this one was my least favorite tasting, but it does sadden me to have to take a tree out. There's just something special about trees in the landscape. So before I cut this tree down, I'm going to be laying tarps down, and it seems a bit drastic, but to ensure that I don't spread the spores any more than necessary, I will be spraying this tree down with um, a water and bleach solution. Mm -hmm.